It's me, Teacher Jean. In this lesson, you will learn about if then or conditional statements, converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Now, before you proceed, let's have a recall. Think inside the box. What conclusion can you give why some students faced with problems in life such as failing grades, difficulties in meeting deadlines, and lack of appreciation in the importance of education? In this activity, you gave your initial ideas on how to make conclusions based on the given situations. Now let's explore. For activity 1, what's next? In each given situation or statement, identify what will happen next by writing a valid conclusion or consequence. For number 1, an earthquake occurs, what do you think will happen next? The answer is, it can cause tsunamis, landslides, and collapse of some buildings. For number 2, Joaquin follows the implemented rules and guidelines in fighting the spread of coronavirus disease. What will happen next? The answer is, he will not be infected with the virus. Now let's elaborate. We have here the conditional. A conditional statement is a statement written in the if-then form in which one part begins with if and the other part begins with then. The if part is the hypothesis and the then part is the conclusion. In symbol, this read as P implies Q or if P then Q. P is the hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. Now, for you to understand, let's give the hypothesis and conclusion of each statement. For example, number 1, if two lines intersect, then they meet at exactly one point. We have the if part and we have the then part, and that is written in the if-then form or conditional. For the hypothesis, the if part there is two lines intersect. And for the conclusion, the then part there is they meet at exactly exactly one point. For example, number two, we have a polygon which has four sides is a quadrilateral. Now, as you observe, there is no if and then. So, we are going to write it in the if-then form or conditional. And the if-then form is, if a polygon has four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. So, we have the if part and we have the then part. For the hypothesis, the if part there is a polygon has four sides. And for the conclusion, the then part there is it is a quadrilateral. This time, we are going to state the conditional with a given hypothesis and conclusion. For example, number 3, given the hypothesis, a parallelogram has four right angles and for the conclusion, it is a rectangle. So, we are going to state it in the conditional. So, the if-then form is, if a parallelogram has four right angles, then it is a rectangle. For example, number 4, given the hypothesis, this is a triangle has three sides congruent and the conclusion, the triangle is unequilateral. So we are going to state the conditional by writing it in the if-then form. And that is, if a triangle has three sides congruent, then it is an equilateral. So we have the if and we have the then. Next, we have the true table for if-then or conditional statement. Given the hypothesis or P, conclusion or Q, we have the if-then or if P, then Q or P implies Q. So, if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is true, the if-then statement is always true. If the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false, the if-then statement is false false. Next, if the hypothesis is false, the conclusion is true. The if-then statement is true. And for the last, if the hypothesis is false and the conclusion is false, the if-then statement is true. Now, as you observe, based on the table, the only instance that an if-then statement becomes a false statement is if the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false. Otherwise, all other conditions will make it a true statement. 
For you to understand, let's have the given example. All isosceles triangles are right. Now, given the figure of an isosceles triangle, when we say isosceles, based on the definition, that is a triangle consists of two congruent sides. So, on the given triangle XYZ, segment X. Z is congruent to segment XY. They are both equal, which is 8. Now, for the if, then, or conditional, we can say that if a triangle is an isosceles, then it is a right triangle. We have the if part and the then part. For the hypothesis, the if part is a triangle is an isosceles. And that is true based on the given figure. For the conclusion, the then part there is it is a right triangle. And that is considered false based on the given figure because there is no right angle. All the angles there are considered acute angles. So therefore, the if then or conditional statement, if a triangle is an isosceles, then it is a right triangle is considered false. Now to make it true, we can have the counter example, which is if a triangle is an isosceles, then it is not a right triangle. Now let's have another statement which is the converse. The converse of a conditional is formed by interchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. So for the conditional, we have P implies Q or if P then Q. And for the converse, we are going to interchange the hypothesis and the conclusion and that gives us Q implies P or if Q then P. And for you to understand, let's have the given example. For the conditional, if a polygon is a triangle, then it has three sides. For the converse, we have if a polygon has three sides, then it is a triangle. Now take note, in writing the converse, we are going to write the noun on the if part and a pronoun on the then part. So we have the noun a polygon and we have the pronoun it. Now we have here what we call the biconditional. When the conditional and its converse are both true, the two statements can be combined to form a biconditional statement by using the phrase if and only if. Now let's have the given example. For the conditional, if two angles are complementary, then the sum of their measures is 90 degrees and that is considered true. For the converse, if the sum of the measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are complementary and that is also considered true. So if the conditional and the converse are both true, we can combine it to form a biconditional statement. So we can remove the word if and the word then. So we have two angles are complementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. Now let's proceed on the next statement, which is the inverse. The inverse of a conditional is formed by negating the hypothesis and the conclusion. So for the conditional, P implies Q, or if P, then Q, the inverse there is if not P, then not Q. Now as you can see, we use the negative words. So aside from not, we have no, never, will not, cannot do not or don't, does not, no, may not. So the negative words depends on the sentence. So for example, given the conditional, if a polygon is a triangle, then it has three sides. And the inverse of that is, if a polygon is not a triangle, then it has no three sides. And for the last statement, we have the contrapositive. The contrapositive of a conditional is formed by interchanging and negating the hypothesis and the conclusion. 
So, for the conditional, if P, then Q. For the contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. So, as you can see, we interchange and we also negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So, for example, given the conditional, if a polygon is a triangle, then it has three sides. And the contrapositive of that is, if a polygon has no three sides, then it is not a triangle. Now, to sum it up, for the conditional, we have if P, then Q. For the converse, if Q, then P. For the inverse, if not P, then not Q. And for the contrapositive, if not Q, then not P. Now, let's do more. Write the conditional, converse, inverse, and contrapositive of each of the following statements. For number 1, an even number is divisible by 2. For the conditional, if a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. For the converse, if a number is divisible by 2, then it is even. For the inverse, if a number is not even, then it is not divisible by 2. And for the last, we have the contrapositive, if a number is not divisible by 2, then it is not even. For number 2, all supplementary angles form a linear pair. For conditional, if two angles are supplementary, then they form a linear pair. For the converse, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. For the inverse, if two angles are not supplementary, then they do not form a linear pair. And for the last, contrapositive, if two angles do not form a linear pair, then they are not supplementary. For number 3, congruent angles have the same measure. For conditional, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. For the converse, if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. For the inverse, if two angles are not congruent, then they do not have the same measure. For the contrapositive, if two angles do not have the same measure, then they are not congruent. For number 4, collinear points are points lying on the same line. For the conditional, if two points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. For the converse, if two points lie on the same line, then they are collinear. For the inverse, if two points are not collinear, then they do not lie on the same line. And for the contrapositive, if two points do not lie on the same line, then they are not collinear. For number 5, parallel lines will never intersect. For conditional, if two lines are parallel, then they will never intersect. For the converse, if two lines will never intersect, then they are parallel. Now for the inverse, if two lines are not parallel, then they will intersect. Now, as you observe, we have already the negative word never. If you are going to negate a negative, it will become positive. So, we can remove the word never. For the contrapositive, if two lines will intersect, then they are not parallel. And for number 6, the sum of the measures of complementary angles is 90 degrees. For the conditional, if two angles are complementary, then the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. For the converse, if the sum of their measures of two angles is 90 degrees, then they are complementary. For the inverse, if two angles are not complementary, then the sum of their measure is not 90 degrees. For the contrapositive, if the sum of the measures of two angles is not 90 degrees, then they are not complementary. Now it's your turn to it yourself. Write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of each of the following statements. 
don't forget to comment down below your answers. Happy learning! Thanks for watching! Please like and share. And don't forget to subscribe on my channel and click the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I'm going to upload a new one. Maraming salamat!